I'm held responsible for what God has required for me to do, amen, and other people that are believers will be held accountable for what they are to do. So I stand on the word of God. Let's go into the scripture. We're going to talk about temptations again. Over Matt through the fourth chapter. Uh, it'll be around the first verse, but I'm going to read uh, over in the third chapter a little bit. Praise God. The three temptations that our Savior Jesus Christ faced. And I know today where we live at, some of us are facing some temptations that try to persuade you, uh, tempt you to go in some areas you know that will cause destruction to your inner man. Can I hear you? We have to be very careful as believers that we won't be lured into areas that will cause us to fall because we're in a, living in a time with a great falling away. Amen. Because people do not want to hear of what the word is saying anymore. A lot of people don't want to hear. I'm not saying everyone, but some people have got to a point where they think they knew it all. Uh -huh. I don't need no more teaching. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't need all this because you know what? I've been in the church for 20 years. Uh -huh. It don't make no difference how long we in church right. in sitting in the building. It don't make no difference. But until we learn something and be able to use the word, be an effective witness for Jesus Christ against the enemy. Can I get a witness? Because there's a devil loose. Amen. That's a devil loose. Walking to and fro, seeking who he may devour. But we must stand as a, on the word. Can I get amen? amen? Praise God. I love God. Because he loved me first. All right. Let's say... Over in the second chapter of Matthew. Matthew here. Third chapter, excuse me. Let me get my bearings together here. Look at verse 16. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lightning upon him. This was a testimony from heaven that God was declaring Jesus Christ his son here. Amen. Going down in baptism and John was the one that be responsible for the baptism, water baptism. Praise God. The heavens opened up as a testimony. Amen. And that's a blessing to see in the word of God. How many of you have a testimony today that heaven is backing you up? Okay, man. Do you have heaven backing you up today? I do. Praise God for that. Thank you. Verse 17. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, and whom I'm well pleased. God claimed Jesus as his son. Now let's go into the message. We're talking about three temptations. Amen. How many of you know that man cannot live by bread, by eating natural food, by, by the what? The word of God. That's your spiritual food you got to have every day. Amen. You got to take up your cross every day. Amen. We can't afford to lay that cross down. We can't afford to lay the word of God down. Praise God. Let's check down in the scripture. Then Jesus, our Savior, was led up to this up of the spirit into the wilderness over in Judea area to be tempted, tested, tried of the devil. Now, how many of you have been tested this last week of the enemy in so many areas? How many of you have been tempted to touch that thing that may cause devastation in your life? Can I get an amen? Praise God. And we know that that enemy job is, he's a number one in deception. He's a professional deceiver, amen. He is a professional liar. I'm talking about Satan. He's a pro in what he does. But what are we doing? Are we going to walk in the valleys of the shadow of death and feel no evil? Or are we going to give in to the enemy traps and snares? But I do not desire today as a believer to walk. In the past of ungodliness. But my desire is to walk in the path of righteousness. Amen. Yes. 
Now, I got the word of God. That's what I, that's what I need this morning. I need the word. How many of you need the word? Say, Lord, I need your word. Yes, I do. Hallelujah. Three temptations. This is coming up into now. Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards hungry. He had fasted in the 40 days coming to the event of John, the events of John over references over in John, the first chapter, verse 19 through verse 23. You can read that in your leisure time. But we see here in the scripture where Jesus was led by the spirit of God on the inside. Now, that, that was a time where in the, the Holy Spirit had not been sent back yet, but the Holy Spirit was moved on them. Amen. It was not uh, on the inside yet, but until Jesus was what? Resurrected. That's when you see the signs of the tongue over the day of Pentecost. Amen. How many days did it take for the Holy Ghost to be sent back? from the resurrection 50 days 50 days praise god he was tempted of the enemy of the devil because he was on a fast and how many of you have been on an appointed fast by god in your christian experience yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. now the first few days are going to be your hardest test <laughs> when god assigned you to do a fast you're going to have some temptations to break the fast. And you will have dreams, uh, plates of food passing by in your memory. It may be when you're walking uh, on your job, on your job, and in your bed at night. Yield not to temptation. For what yielding is sin. And I read, uh, I looked at something, and I'm, this is me personally. I said, the temptation itself is not sin. Not until you heal. Yeah, until, you heal. Yeah. <laughs> until you give in to that thing that you know better. And how many of you Christians have been to the area you know better? Uh -huh. And you can almost slap yourself and say, why did I walk yeah. into being stupid? <laughs> how many of you been tested and said, oh, man, I, I can slap myself right now, silly, because I know better. <laughs> to walk into that trap, I've seen it before time. God revealed it to me, and I still was crazy enough to walk into it. I can't hear nobody. Amen. Praise God. All right, Jesus uh, was being tempted as a reference like Adam and Eve was over in Genesis, the third chapter, verse 6, where Eve saw the fruit was enticing to her eyes, the lust of her eyes, and the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And all this lust of the flesh of her eyes caught her attention, and she was lured and to touch the fruit. Not only did she touch the fruit, but she ate of it. Not only did she eat of it, she gave some to Adam. Uh -huh. He ate of it. Uh -huh. And that brought forth sin to the world. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Moving on just a little bit more here. Temptations come to test you, see where you stand there with God, see where you give in, will you give out, amen, will you faint in the time of adversity, when things get tough, when going get rough, are we going to stop praising God? To help us through a temptation. How many of you know when you praise God, you acknowledge the Lord and say, Lord, I see the thing. God, I don't know how to deal with this thing. I can't escape this thing. But God, I need you to help me to escape. Can I get a witness in God's house? Some of us just praise God with your hand clap because you know how good he is. Oh, it's all right to do a little tap dance for Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Fasten was a temptation uh, when Jesus was going to, after the 40-day fast was over. Here comes the enemy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. When you're getting ready to walk into your blessed land, promised land, uh -huh. when God promised you something and you pray for an answer, can I hear you? And you get ready to walk into that promised land, here comes the enemy to try to make you relapse, to put you in reverse. To make you go away from that blessing line. To make you stop getting that blessing. But God wants to give you that blessing. But there were some temptations there. Can I hear you? That will stop you. That's Satan's job. He's on his job. He's a tempter. He disguises things. Make them look real good. He is a master of disguise. 
He can camouflage anything that make it look like it's good. Uh -huh, uh -huh. There's a way that seems right unto man. Uh -huh. But the end there of the ways of death. That's right. Praise God. God got a way of revealing to us these things. But we must listen to his voice. His word will tell us that have no temptation taking you. But search is coming to man. For God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be attempted above that which you are able. But will with that temptation make a way of escape. That you may be able to bear. How many of you have been tempted this week to say some words out of your mouth that will flower us? <laughs> that will make someone's eardrum begin to, to move around tickle. How many of you begin was tempted to raise your hands in anger? To do the old slap job on someone that been picking with you. How many of you know good and well you already ate a full course meal at 7 o'clock? And God has spoken to you said don't eat nothing else. And you go hard headed and eat something and you get sick. That's temptation. Walked into the trap and yielded to that, in the, to that thing. And that thing bothered you at night. You could sleep. Your stomach just was boiling. And your inside was burning. And you couldn't get no rest because you yielded to that thing, that plate of food that God told you not to. Can I get an amen? Praise God. Lord, help me. How many of you say, Lord, help me today? Lord, help, help me. me, Jesus. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> Jesus was on a fast 40 days. There, um, there were um, four men I, I wrote down just a couple of notes here. It said four men that went on a 40-day fast. Uh, well, Moses, Joshua, Elijah, and Jesus. 40 day fast. And I know they was tempted to do things to break it. But like I said, that fast is for to help a person in their faith walk. It, not, it will not make God do nothing. The fast will not make God do nothing, but it helps you to be able to receive from the Lord. Can I hear you? That's the only way you're going to receive sometimes by putting that plate on the floor, right. on the table. Leave it there. It may be to, from 12 to 3 o'clock the next day. It may be that. It may be a one-day fast. You know, any kind of fast that God may lead you on. You must do what he says. But this was a recorded temptation in the word of God. And let's move on. We don't want to get stuck right there. 40 days and 40 nights total. Full 40 days. And after 40 days, he was hungry in the era of starvation. How many know when you are in the era of starvation, the enemy will start to attack you? But let me tell you, the emphasis is on this latter part of the verse. When you come off a 40-day fast, the temptation was go ahead and eat a loaf of bread. He tempted Jesus, why don't you make these stones be turned to bread? Now, I have seen some stones. This is my thought. I have seen stones when I was on the West Coast that looked like loaves of bread. And Satan know how to draw a picture and connect with your appetite just to make you yield to that temptation. Can I hear you? That stone, I'm saying... I would say, will look and shape like a loaf of bread. And that's why he said, why don't you turn these stones into bread? But Jesus did not buy that because Jesus said, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself, Jesus, I cannot live by the bread right here alone. But let me tell you one thing, but, but it's by the, every word of God because the word is God. No, we going to have to need the word of God because the word is God. To survive in these last evil days, in these dark times, a time of deception, we're going to need to be hidden in God's word because the word is what? God. We got to stand firm. Every believer had to stand for theirself. You cannot stand on your mother's religion. You cannot stand on your father's religion. You cannot stand on your grandparents' religion. But you got to stand on the word of God according to Acts 4 and 12. Right. Amen. There's salvation in no other way but through Jesus. You can call on any other name that you want to call on. But there is no salvation in no names of Buddha. And all of out of worship God. There's no uh, salvation in those names, but only in the name 
Did you hear me? I said, only in the name of Jesus. Praise God. I love God because of this. Let's move on just down a little further. And when the tempter came and he said, if thou be the son of God, command. Because Satan know that God had power in a way because he was the son of God. Satan know he was the son of God. He said, command that these stones be made bread. Look at verse 4. And he answered, Jesus answered and said, it is written. It's in the word of God. Because I am the word. Man shall not live by bread, the natural bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. This is what Jesus said. Look at verse number five. Then the devil taking him up. This is the second temptation coming up. Taking him up into a holy city and setting him on the pinnacle of the temple, the highest point. And said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thou self down. Praise God. And let me go to a reference. In your leisure time, you can read that. Look over and this was, this was a misquote. Psalms 91, verse 11 and 12 is your reference. If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written right here. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hand they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And we know Satan is the author of confusion, and he, again, like he did eat Adam and Eve in the garden, misquotes. Put in an additional word that shouldn't be there. And we have to be careful when we look at the word of God and and put the word of God in perspective because the enemy can bring and he can work in them little loopholes where the word of God is not put in the right areas. He can work in there. Can I get an amen? He can work in those areas of weakness. That's what his job is. But a lot of Christian people have fallen asleep. They have fallen asleep. They said they don't need God right now. They put God on hold. They said I'm going on vacation. I'm, I, don't, I don't need God. A lot of Christians had to be very careful not to be the one that will fall on the wayside and be trampled by the enemy. Can I get an amen? We got to stand and hold on to the gospel plow and don't look back. Amen. For you see in the word of God, Jesus was telling us plainly that we must live by this word. Because the enemy will try you and test you uh, to go into the natural realm and try to, he'll try to display the natural realm as things look real good and that this will help you, that it won't hurt you. But Satan is out to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But my God said, what? I am come to bring you life. Woo! And I feel the spirit and that more abundantly. I cannot do it by this natural food but I need the word I said I need the word I'm starving for the word praise God I need more of the word I need more of God and less of me how many of you know you get sick and tired of yourself moving in the way what God wants to move amen I must decrease and God increase in my life to, for in order for me to receive my blessing from the Lord. Amen. I must get out of the way. Can I hear you? I got to move, people. I can't stand in for nobody else if they don't want me to stand in for them. But I can pray for people. I pray for you because God had put that on my heart. He put it in my spirit to pray for you. I tell you, God has charged me to do and speak the word of God. I tell you, like he did some of you in here, he put the word in you. And he let you be that instrument to speak the word. I know people don't want to hear a lot of time when you speak the word. But so be it, you must speak the word in the name of Jesus Christ. I don't care if they don't want to hear in your home. I don't want to care if they want to hear in your family. But you still do what God says. Amen. God had charged me, and like Jesus said, I'm charged to do this. For the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. For the God has anointed me to preach the gospel. According to Isaiah 6 and 1, 1. Amen? Amen. Jesus said that. This is for him. And also, it's for us today as instruments, oracles. We will be held to a higher standard as leaders. Higher standards as leaders because we got to stand when you don't see nobody. 
We got to stand when no one wants to come to the building of church. We got to stand when it looks like to me the temperatures outside are going wild. So cold and so freezing, but we got to stand on the word of God. You not only do you stand and hear it, but you stand in your home on the word of God because that's where your most problem is going to be. Most of the foes is going to be inside. And you know we face foes on our job. We know we face foes in our environment we live in. We face foes in our communities, but we know what the word of God is saying. Praise God. We must stand on what? The word. Jesus stood right here. He was weak from a fast. He was weak to give in. He, can, he could have made an excuse. Say, I'm just going to go 20 days. I'm stopping. I'm going to fast. He could have said that. But he didn't. This began of Jesus' ministry. This 40 days started him going. Amen. We know his ministry all the time, but it really got into action where we will see miracles after this. Miracles and miracles took place after this. Amen. And, and I tell you, I, I was so interested, and I was thinking about John the Baptist. He was the one baptizing Jesus, but John the Baptist, amen, well, his mother was feel, he would feel in his, in his mother's womb. He would feel the Holy Spirit on the inside of her womb, and, and he jumped in there. He would feel the Holy Spirit in there. In this, woo, Jesus, I praise you. Mm. How many of you are so glad today? You got that Holy Spirit. I'm glad. Serious. It keeps me when my mind want to go crazy. Can I hear you? When my mind want to go east. When my mind want to go west. When my mind want to go north and south. The Holy Spirit is the one that stabilized me. Amen. I'm not stable without him. Can I get an amen? I'm not stable without this Holy Spirit. And we all need that Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let's move on to this temptation again here. I kind of got off track a little bit, but praise God. Like I said, enemy took him up because Satan is what the God of this world. He called himself showing Jesus what Jesus already knows. <laughs> Ain't that something? You look at this. Jesus already know all of his kingdom because he made the heaven and earth. He made it. He already know about it. And now you're going to get a devil <laughs> had the audacity come try to show me what I, I already know what's going on. I already made the heaven and earth. I already know every area. You can't hide nothing from me. Can I get amen? You can't hide a thing from me because I know where everything is. How many know that God is everywhere but Satan is not? But Satan got his little missionaries out there. <laughs> and he got his little imps out there. But he don't know like God knows. But we know one thing for sure, people, today. Satan have no good end. That's right. Because he knows his destination. His final destination is what? The lake of fire. But we have to be careful that our final destination is not the lake of fire. How many of you like to be burned by putting your hand on a stove? How many of you know that hurts when you feel the fire? When it burns and, and cinches your skin. How many of you just smelt your skin before being burnt? Not good. Don't feel good to be burned. So I don't expect to be that be my final result. Amen. But Jesus is telling us today we must apply this good word. In any situation that we are in, we all go through trials. We all go through hurts. We all go through what? Disappointment sometimes. And we get discouraged. But one thing we know for sure, but if we will just dig into the word of God, I'm serious this morning. And we will just get in here and know that we can survive any temptation if we just hold on to what the word of God says. And God will help us. I say God will help us. When we acknowledge him in all of our ways, when we acknowledge that we are falling into a temptation, God can help us through it. Can I hear you? But we need to understand something. We need to identify because there are so many traps. There are many snares set out for believers. Your name has been mentioned by the enemy. Every one of us, our names have been mentioned by the enemy. He wants to find a way to take you away from the course. What God has spoken to you, 
He wants to take away the blessing that God has spoken to you. But you, your name have been mentioned. Let me tell you today, a lot of people don't want to say this, but the enemy, he knows natural stuff. He knows people's names and stuff. Amen. He knows your addresses. He got, he got spies out there. He got spies. You talking about the eye in the sky? He got them all over. He got his agents all over, scattered all over. Oh, he come in and said, oh, I'm going to put a freeze on that church. I'm going to call certain people to get ill. I'm going to call certain people to get in the area where they can't move to get to the church. Can I hear you? But you got to know yourself, seriously today, that you are appointed by God and you are anointed to do what God says to you. Amen. I don't care if it's in a bathtub. When God told you to pray for somebody, you pray for them. Amen. When a name run across your mind, don't just scratch your head. You better pray for them. Something's going up. Something is up when you get a name mentioned to you. Something is up. There's so much slack in the house of the Lord. Oh, man, sometimes people want to shut down on prophecy, but prophecy comes another way. God, it will not be shut down. He said, I have so many people will not bow to Baal. Can I hear you? How many of you saying today, I'm not going to bow to Baal. I'm not going to bow to the temptations that he put in my pathway, and every one of them have them. And sometimes we can't see them. They far away. Sometimes we just got to wait on God patiently, seek his face, stay before him. In your time when you think you got plenty of time, when things look like they're going good, that's the time you better pray. That's the time we better pray when things look like they're going good. Seriously, when we think things look all good. You hear this little slang they use now, I'm all good. It's good. It's all good. Don't, you know, don't worry about it. It's all good. Sudden destruction. Sudden destruction can fall in a time. And we have to be prayerful. Let's go from me on down because I know that message, that messenger is going to get burned first because it come back to him. As soon as he opened his mouth, I can tell you right now. Some things coming. I got to obey God. I can look around. I can see emptiness, but I still be like John, John and say, I, I'm a voice crying in the wilderness. I'm the single voice. It's crying. Make the pathway straight. Get on the pathway of righteousness. Make your pathway straight. Let Jesus be the Lord of your life. Can I get it? Uh, amen. Some of just praise him. Thank him. You know, I tell you, it's not about me and my woes and my little ups and downs. It's all about Christ. You know what? Look at what he suffered. And I'm going to finish this message another time. But look what he suffered. He suffered. He was whipped so bad. How many people would stand there and get whipped like he did for the sins of the world? No. I don't, no one else could do it but him. He was the sacrifice. He was the substitution for every man. He was the one that stood in for us. I don't understand these people today that's taking vacation from God. I can't afford to. I'm serious today. I can't afford to take no vacation from God. I'm telling you right now. Because my flesh will, what, tear me out. My flesh will work on me. When I don't use the word of God. This is what all that got right here. That's all I got left. When everything else said and done, when all the dust has settled to the ground, this is all I got. I'm serious. I come to that point in my life, you know, I'm in my fifties, yeah, but I've come to the point in my life where this is it. I can trust the word of God. Let me tell you, I can I can trust the word, but how can how many other people can you trust? How many people can you trust? Can you trust God? Yes. Because you know why? He never failed me. When things look dim, he still come through. It might not come when I want him, but he always come. Seriously. He's always came through. From Mississippi to here. 
Even when I ain't really know about God, but I know God's so powerful that he put them trees, all them big trees out there. I used to think about that a lot, sitting on the ground. And I look up to the stars, sitting on the ground when I was a little young, whatever, young boy. Let's look at the star, how amazing God is. And how big God is. And making the universe. A sky so big, you can see all over and you still ain't reached the end of it. It's how big God he is. And I have the audacity to sit up here and act like I'm a prideful man. Like, I ain't got to praise him. I need to be slapped silly when I get to a point like that. When I get to a point like that, I need to be slapped silly. Because I know better. You know, God brought me a long ways. He brought me through some times where I didn't have no money. But he made a way. He spoke to somebody else. That planted seeds in my life. How many of you been there when you didn't have them, but God spoke to someone else? It may be the smallest thing, and you don't think it's nothing. But that's something that you needed, though, and they gave it to you. You can be in there starving, and someone bring a plate to church. And give it to you. Someone, you may be at your home with no clothes, and someone bring a, a box of clothes to your house. Amen. How many of you have been through it? I'm telling you, I've been through it where people have done these things. So I thank God for his system. But let me tell you before I close, I ain't going to depend on the system of this world. Right. God is gearing us into this to th start think that way. Right. Not to gear it into the economics of this world. How I many you know that failed? The stock market has failed. The summit is already done. But see, because that what man trusts in is to be taken away. And that's why we trust in God. He's not be taken away because I'm putting my treasures in heaven. Where there's no rust, no moth, no thieves can break through, nor steal. Because people try to get away from planting seed in the church. They try to get away. They think church demanding too much. No. You got outreach ministry, it needs some fueling. It needs to find us. Reaching the lost is what we should be doing as true believers. Reaching those people that shed in. How many of you know you know some people that shed in the houses? That they need this gospel. Full sermons are available anytime at www.anchoredinfaith.org. Contact us by calling 319-828-4815 or write us at Anchored in Faith, PO Box 204, Oxford, Iowa, 52322 or email us at tv at anchoredinfaith.org. This has been a copyrighted presentation of Anchored in Faith Gospel Church, Oxford, Iowa.